Hello, this is Kyle from Marble Environmental Imaging. We're putting together a series of videos on how to use GIS for environmental planning purposes. We're at www.marbleenvironmental.com. We're going to start with a tutorial on how to use GIS for environmental modeling. We realize every modeling effort is different, but we think some of the basics and some of the concepts we'll go over will be useful for your efforts. The first project we're going to take a look at is a lagoon restoration project. So the example we're going to look at in terms of modeling is a tidal lagoon restoration project. And we were given some raw data from engineers, and this data consists of um, an X and a Y coordinate, along with a value for tidal frequency, the amount of time that the point is being inundated by the tide over the uh, this tidal cycle. And we needed to take this data and to associate some sort of habitat value with it. So we needed a habitat value. This is the model that we used. It has all these different types of habitats. You got upland all the way down to unvegetated water. It assigns a frequency of inundation from 0 to 100. Here's the curve. So basically we created a range that these habitats would be found in in terms of the tides. It's a fairly simple model. However, it suited the purposes that we need we need it for the project. So this is our model. And the data that we got from engineering was just a text file. And the text file contains an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a third value. Third value again is that frequency inundation. So one is actually 100. Here's the X, this is an UTM, the Y, and the value. So one is 100, we got 11, should be 11%. And so that represents the amount of time that that point is underwater throughout the tidal cycle. So the question is, how do we import this in the GIS and how do we use this to model habitats? So there's a few ways to import the data. I have ArcMap open here. The easiest way to do it is just to import the text file. Now this will work a lot of the times, however, sometimes it won't, uh, especially larger files. You may have to use a different method. We'll go over that. Um, ArcMap does work particularly well with Excel, and so we'll go through that next. Um, but for this one, we'll just navigate to where our text file is. This is the raw data file right here. And we'll hit Add. Go over to the left to the table of contents. Right click, display XY data, and you'll get this. So the X field is your field one, that's the one we just looked at, that text file. Y field is field two. And the Z field, which is the inundation frequency, is field three. Now this is important too to make sure that you have the right coordinate system. You don't want to use the data later and only find out that it's not projected correctly. So we know this one was derived in UTM. We know that from the engineers. We go to projected coordinate systems. UTM, and it's an 83, and it's 10N. So we'll get this done straight ahead so we don't have to worry about that later. So this is just reminding us to export it later as a shape file. And there we go, there's our spatial data. So you can already tell this is much more useful than the text file that we had before. We can actually see the relationship to the points you can see the lagoon itself, you can see the, the inlet outlet, and the open water over here. So, we do have to export this as a shape file. So we'll right click on the point, data, export data. And you do want to export all features in the source data that we went through. And we just need to name it. Name this modeling2. Name whatever you like. Make sure that you're exporting as a shape file, not as a geodatabase at this point. And save. Click OK. And it's exporting all of our points into a shape file. Yes, we do. Add it as a layer. So at this point, you have your shape file displayed. You can remove this raw data. And now we'll go through briefly um, if you're in a situation where you're having problems using the text file. Uh, we can also use the Excel 
use Microsoft Excel to um, import the uh, the uh, raw data. And so let's remove this, and we'll go back down to Excel. I've got an open workbook here. We'll just go to open, and we'll navigate to where our raw data was. There it is, here's our raw data. And you'll get this screen. And so, wants to know if it's delimited or fixed width. Baseline means is there something in between the numbers or is there not? And there is. In our raw data, there was a space between each value, and Excel is going to recognize that. So we'll stick with delimited. We want to start at row one. And we'll get a preview here. And you can see it looks like everything is good. We got an X, a Y and third frequency inundation. So everything looks good. We'll finish. X, Y. So you notice that there aren't decimal places. What you probably want to do is select all. Format cells. We'll get a number. And we want two decimal places here. I'm going to go back to the original um, status that the uh, raw data was in, just to be safe. And so there we go. Got our X or Y and our frequency inundation to decimal points. So let's save this and we're going to save it as a CSV file, comma separated value and ArcMap does particularly well with this. So CSV, comma delineated and keep the same name because the other one was a text file and then we'll save it. A common error. We'll just hit yes again. Okay. And close Excel, minimize it. And again, we'll go back to add data. Here's our CSV, not the text. We'll use a CSV this time. It's a very similar process. Right click, display XY data. And you're going to go through the same process that we went through before. And we have the same coordinate system that we had, UTM zone 10N and AD 83. So there we go. So that's just another way to enter data if you're having a problem with the text file. Um, for very large files, uh, you'll have to use access. Um, Excel has a limit on the numbers of entries that they can use. Um, and granted, this is only for very large modeling, very large data sets you're inputting. Um, but it's good to know that if you do have a larger data set to use uh, Microsoft Access.